a lot. This brings us to episode six, which was uh, as uh, um, Tyra alluded to it for shout out to Atlanta, the fourth season, uh, the group that set, set next to the door, the episode that threw everyone off, uh, the thinking that uh, Thomas Washington was the first black CEO of Disney. I'm not gonna lie, guys. It took it, it took me out a little bit because I was so it was such a tone shift from yeah. all the previous four or five episodes. But on a rewatch, I really came to appreciate, especially all the stuff that they gave. They answered pretty much all the questions we had. But it did throw me off initially. But uh, I want to talk to you first, uh, Tyra. What did you feel about this uh, the sixth episode from a performance standpoint, information we got, and everything in between? I love the Black Detective, just all devoted. Like, I'm going to solve this case. Right. <laughs> I love that. It, Like you said, it did throw me off. I was like... Cause I, I had to readjust. Cause as soon as it started, I was like, "Oh man, what is, what is it? y'all slowing down the pace?" Like, I, I need some answers. I want to know more. Like, is she okay? Did he shoot her? Like, right. <laughs> I want to know if Leah, because I felt like Leah would have followed her to the parking lot. But <laughs> I, I, I like the episode for um, just the narrative of what she had to say about people just not caring, not really just investing in a lot of these murders or just really looking into somebody like Drea's direction. Mm -hmm. When we got to see the real people and it's, I was like, I got the Googling again. I was like, let me check. Oh, trust me, I was. <laughs> to um, well. make sure that Drea Green and Marissa Jackson are real people because yeah. here they go again, playing with my emotions. I felt like they were trying to get the word out on the hotline. Like if you've seen this person, You're right. call, this episode, number. call this number if you've seen it. <laughs> But, you know, it wasn't. But that's just that's just how good it was. But I yeah. loved her just really paying attention to detail. And, of course, there's comedy. Like, I saw this bonnet, and it was hot chips. You know, it was a sister. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, lo I, I loved all of that. But just really getting uh, into Drea's back backstory and mm -hmm. the way that they took her in and just how she was always, you know, troubled. And of course, when you take somebody in, whether it's for a check or not, nobody ever assumes like, oh, I'm going to get the kid that's going to maybe be a little harder than the next. This isn't going to be easy. She needs a little bit more help than we were than we were willing to initially give. Right. But just really finding out, you know, where she is coming from, the system. I love the conversation that they had when she went. Like, I told you not to talk. Like, I was rolling. For, I, it, was, it, was a, it was a whole lot of laughter going on. But just how devoted she was. It was like, nobody else cares. Just because uh, Drea or whomever this may be. I laughed at the sketch. Like, it was, it was funny. <laughs> The sketch from the club, but like she's absolutely not on anybody's radar just because she is a black woman. She mm -hmm. could. There are so many. Nobody's willing to take the time to connect the dots just because of not only who's being murdered, but who can make you mean to tell right. me that this person is doing it. But once they, you know, incorporated the pictures and she went to have the conversation with the mother and we find out, you know, Harris has passed at this point. There's just been so much loss and she feels like she failed and she didn't do all that she could do. And we find out, you know, not only the uh, the sleepover situation that was just, I guess, the end all to be all, but just... um Harris feeling like they had an inappropriate, you know, relationship and they may have been a little too close. And he he just really didn't like that. He just felt like, oh, oh, this is a problem. I need to separate the two. I just wanted to know more. Like, when exactly did Marissa leave? I felt like it was a situation of if you're going to keep, you know, attaching yourself to her, we've put her out. You're going to keep, you know, giving her money or whatever. We have to disown you. We're not going to supplement her. We want nothing to do with her. And she just couldn't let her go because they were so connected. But just to know all the trauma that she came from, whether it was her real life in the, the red milk or being in, you know, certain custody, we just don't know what happened to her. We just really get to see that Marissa was the only person who ever really just truly gave a damn about her and bothered to understand her. So you could really get into why she would attach herself to her in that way. But the episode was, you know, it, it was it was really good. It was different, but it was still good and I enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it was a perfect episode to show what America's number one program genre right now, which is true crime. Yes. Uh, I haven't gotten bit by that bug. Uh, my mom used to watch it when I was a lot younger. So maybe I'm just like, I have seen my fair share of true crime and TLC and all that stuff. So I was just, you know, uh, whatever it case may be. But I, I really think they played into that very, very well. I mean, hell. In the last year or so, the Jeffrey Dahmer Netflix special. You know, I'm a I'm a you fan. That's my 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 um, kind of oh, pleasure show. Ellie, with, uh, we Mr. Talk. The Mr. Joe Goldberg. 
Yeah, <laughs> listen, B, if you ever get a chance to watch you, if you think Dominique Fishback, Dre get, gets on your nerve or how much she gets away with, go watch you and watch yeah. my man Joe swerve and curve everyone and try to get him caught. But, um, you know, I thought this episode did a great job of, of displaying, uh, again, the sensation of true crime. And, and again, for Atlanta fans, I mentioned it in my review when we covered Atlanta. I need more of like if they can continue the band episodes and have it be these one off crazy true life situations, I would be here for it. I thought this was a great episode to display that. But Brandon, man, the truth is out now. We get all the information we've been looking for, man. Uh, with uh, what's her name, Loretta, Loretta Green? Was it Loretta uh, was Green. she related to uh, Andrea at one point or in, in, in her family history? But what did you think about this episode, B? Man, I almost forgot about that part. I was like, oh God, I hope they're not related. That would just be crazy. <laughs> um, but I, I love La- 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 Loretta Green as well. Um, I love the energy and passion of how she. Um, that would be know, a great show if they did that. Dre and Joe. Dre and Joe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, and just how you know driven she was to try to solve this case. Um, and I really liked the way all the information was coming together. All of the questions were being answered and all the dots were being connected. Uh, but overall, though, I'm still conflicted because um, I thought the concept, the idea of this episode was incredible and I loved it. But starting kind of even in the middle and towards the end of the episode, I thought the execution was horrible. Uh, mm-hmm. was trash. This was my least favorite episode just because I thought the acting went down the toilet bowl and that really clocked me out. The reason why I said that, I mean, the acting was great from every cast member in every episode except for this one, mm-hmm. especially when they went when they went to the the foster office and they was talking to uh, Patricia and then the camera guy oh, wanted to working. butt in as well. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I mean, <laughs> like it was silly and goofy, but it was like it just didn't seem realistic to me at all. I mean, just the whole vibe was completely different from the rest of the show. And I don't know why they had to change it up that way. Um, now, like you guys, I was still like, damn, did this really happen? Like I'm Googling stuff and like, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, this whole time I really want Dre to go down. So I'm like, I really need to save the number and I'm going to, you know, try to get this woman locked up. Hey, you know what like, that, 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 that. She wasn't, she's not too far from where our, where our wonderful brand uh, is. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was really, um, and then in a way he shot the thing at the end where Donald Glover was on the red carpet. Yes. Like, yeah, we're working on this. And they showed the variety article. Yep. About, I was like, ain't this some shit? And then I found out that I was uh, bamboozled. And I was like, dude, you got to stop. Like, yeah. you're really making my heart be fast. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it was, um, I just thought that the, the acting kind of, you know, went down the crapper. And I was also confused, too, because I was like, wait a minute, like, did they change cast members? That ain't Leon. That ain't the same woman. Like, <laughs> what is going on? Yeah, so I, it just took, I and I was just like, once it it, it kind of just yeah. I was I was confused and you know didn't know it was. I thought it was real, then it wasn't real, and then the acting. So you know it. it I, I what I really did like though is the white girl explaining her side of the story, her getting stabbed, <laughs> and then I do have the question about the attic, like. Did was was Leon was Harris? Did he lock her in the basement like for the whole duration, yeah, or just for that party, or just for the party that the sleepover? I, I feel like he locked her in that basement about, multiple times. Yeah, I was about to say I feel like she was comfortable in that basement, not comfortable. Yeah. But I feel like she was familiar with it. Like that was something that he did often to just kind of have Separate her out of sight, out of mind, and not have her jumping on nobody. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, those are my thoughts. Yeah, I just, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it, it was, it was good. It's just, oh gosh, kind of clock me out. B, I love when you don't like something. Like, yeah. It was a... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I man. Hey, I appreciate it, man. The truth. We need the truth. Uh, and it was B. I just got no man. Was this you during the episode, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is me. Yeah, this is me. Man. This is my face. Yeah, this is uh, me that's, watching this times two. Times two. Time two. two. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. Uh, real. What did you think about um falling through the cracks? Um, because I, I to go back to B's point. I like I said when I first watched it, I was kind of thrown off by it a lot. It took me a second rewatch to really kind of appreciate it, but mm-hmm. it was tonally just so different and. 
not necessarily the acting was bad, but it was just, it was heightened more. It was just, you know, she was, we were so, we just came off of back to back traumatic, dark, sinister episodes, kind of more, you know, a little bit more uh, levity, I guess, uh, that threw me off. But real, what did you think about this episode and what were some things that stood out to you? I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. Um, I thought it was super meta. Um, yeah. I enjoyed the the goof who sat by the door episode of Atlanta. <sighs> Um, Arguably the big, best episode I'm, of that. Yeah. Oh yeah, my goodness. I'm that a big fine. Abbott Elementary fan. Mm. And I know Donald is. He and Quinta have done interviews together where they've talked about like how much they appreciate each other's work. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of what I saw in the mockumentary of this episode, I really appreciated the the meta-ness of it and how it kind of gave the show a way to break the fourth wall in a way that the show couldn't do because <laughs> it was more of a dramatic rendering. It took me a second. Like I said, I think like everybody, like I said, I was watch, first watching, I was like, okay, this detective, okay, Drayden got on somebody's radar, what's going on? And then when they started showing the pictures, I was like, oh, okay, this is them trying to make it seem like this is real. Mm-hmm. Because so many of the situations were based on real situations, but then kind of like Tyra said, I had went online, I was like, is this, is Marissa <laughs> real? Is this, okay, no, that's not real. This is them trying to make it seem as though it's real. This is the true essence of satire yep. making, complaining the situation to make it seem like it's real so that people start to question the actions of this character and make them think about it. So I was like, okay, once I clicked in on that, I was like, I like this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I could have done, a. I mean, I thought it was quirky, cute, funny, a little bit of breaking levity with like the cameraman and everything like that. But I, I like all of the answers that we got. Yeah. But at the same time, I still feel like that makes me want to know even more because when we saw the pictures and what really got me was the, the woman playing the real version of Mrs. Jackson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. she's looking at the, the photos and she's going through the photos you could kind of sense a real sense of regret mm-hmm. about what happened with Dre like her feeling like sh- they failed Dre right it was like a bit of remorse for sure yeah. it was more like her listening to her husband so I was like man I really hope if we get a second season we get a little bit more about what happened in that home and what happened when she left that home because Ma's feeling real regret and it's you don't. I don't think you would feel that if you really blamed that child. She would have realized that there was something in her that this was a child going through this. So that was really powerful, I think. Um, but I, I enjoyed the episode. Like I said, I felt it felt really meta. It felt very Abbott, very goofy, set by the door, and I liked that part of it. So yeah, I did miss. I did miss seeing Dominique on screen though. Right, that was another reason that threw me off. Yeah, it was. She yeah. Is just, yeah. She was just killing it all cylinders. Oh, don't put that little girl in my face, Elliot. Yeah, <laughs> nah, and this, so to me, and El, before we get to your thoughts, El, the, the, the reason I really appreciate the second go round for me uh, was it really kind of hit on the nail as far as like the whole hook of the show was touching on toxic fandom, obviously the Beyonce of it all. But then this episode to me proved that that, that was just the hook, the yeah. meat and the potatoes and the foundation of the show was, and again, B, we'll talk about it later as far as sympathizing with this character or not. Well, guys, it doesn't uh, erase her sins of what we've seen her do in the previous six episodes, but it really does hit on this notion of like uh, lack of empathy, lack of uh, of love and what it can manifest into what we see with Dre. So I think that this episode really kind of hit that nail on the head of this character study more so about the toxicity of like fandom or what have you. But uh, L, what did you think about this episode? What stood out to you? Um, the I, I remember distinctly folding clothes watching the episode mm-hmm. and like you know when you kind of doing something and you're watching and you're paying attention but not as much as if you just not doing anything at all yeah. and I remember looking up being like who the hell is that lady like I was watching it <laughs> the entire time mm-hmm. and then I was like wait a, wait a damn minute Mrs. J- that's not Mrs. Jackson and so I had to start it again but then on the <laughs> second go round that's when I realized I don't trust Donald Glover. I just don't. <laughs> because it, it it made me remember Teddy Perkins and how <laughs> like the 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 very first thing that popped up into in my mind was the picture of Teddy Perkins at the award show and everybody um, thinking that Donald Glover was Teddy Perkins, but then there was a picture of Donald Glover with 
Teddy Perkins. I can't trust him. I don't trust him. I don't know what he's going to do. So in this episode, I was like, okay, he on his shit again. Okay, so let me go ahead and pay attention. But I thought the episode was, I thought it was good. It's like, a, it, it like jolted me. There you go. Like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? I thought that was him the whole time. And then Issa Rae behind them thinking, looking, her face was what I was thinking the entire time. Um, and so I think it's it's like a, it, it was like a jolt for me, mm. right? Because we were getting used to somebody say something crazy about Nigel, Dre gonna go ahead and take him out. Somebody yeah. doing something, she gonna have sex with somebody. Somebody gonna do something, she gonna eat some Doritos. Like it's, you know, it was like over and over again with the same thing. So it was like a, like, wake up. Like we, this is what we have been here to, to, to kind of discuss the whole time. It looked different than all number. of the other episodes. Brandon, did you call the number, Brandon? Um, huh? No, they, they, anybody we, called the number? They were called the number. The end. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. like, you know what I mean? And I, I just felt like it was um, something that's, like, true to what they do, what, what Donald Glover does and what he and his brother do. Like, you think that you know what's going on, and then all of a sudden you are completely clueless as to what's going on. Mm-hmm. I thought it was cool. I really liked Loretta Green, she was giving me, you know, a black woman gonna get to the bottom of it. I don't give it like it's just like it. It reminded me of the um the Whitney Houston lyrics. So it's not right, but it's okay when she did the math on the receipt. It's like this is not adding up. Like you, like y'all not not seeing the patterns. And so I really like that part. Um, and I liked just being a social worker, seeing that social worker in the Check everybody. Yeah. Get it together, like don't you know what I mean? Like get it. Get, we gonna we gonna we gonna gather you up about our clients, but mm-hmm. um, you know, I thought it was I thought it was cool, and it it did give you answers, and it did you know kind of put some things together. There she go, that's my girl there. Um, <laughs> but you know, it it this was not one of my favorite episodes, but I think it was an episode that was absolutely needed. Like we needed this episode, yeah. and I think it's cool because again, it was a joke. Like we needed something different to shake us up. Mm-hmm. Um, because we've been traumatized for six solid episodes at this point. So <laughs> like give us a little something different. So I, it was good for what it was. Yeah. Um, and it was needed, like I said, but it wasn't, you know, my my top one in the sh- in the series. Yeah, yeah I think I, I, I yeah, I, I stand with you what it said. It wasn't my favorite, but I did appreciate all the the information they gave, especially I mean they gave us the ending in this episode too, with what happened what really happened, you know, we'll get yeah. to it with this finale, but what really happened to Dre was she, you know, she got arrested when she jumped well, Tony when they got on the stage. But um any final thoughts? Anyone else want to uh mention anything about this uh six episode before we wrap up with the the finale? It was a smart way to introduce Tony. Because I think that mm. if they had just yeah. gone from episode five mm. to episode seven, good point. How to see to see Donald as been. Tony Dre yeah. as Tony? Yep. I think yep. that would have been like we wouldn't have been ready, and that kind of gave us a chance to get ready for it because that was such a shock and such a mm-hmm. that was like the biggest personality change out of all of them. Yeah. Yeah, uh, much I so. think I was the opposite. I would have preferred to see her transition into Tony mm. and, you know, how yeah. we got there versus us just jumping. Because even with her saying, oh, I believe that, you know, she's in Atlanta and of course she's probably changed her name. Nothing yeah. about it equated to her changing into Manny Fresh. I want to know how we got there. <laughs> Get a boot. Okay. <laughs> that man <made me> pray. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that that Tyra, when uh, when's, when's the stand up special? That was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, so I mean, that that leads us, and before we get into the finale, uh, 